Closing deals faster when you're going after cornerstone enterprise clients is a little bit short-sighted. Typical deal size I've seen from initial cold email contact to close could be anywhere from six to 12 months. But these are huge deals that'll set up an agency forever. So for instance, one of our clients, we got a deal with the university. It was an initial deal. I think it was about 100K. And then now they're paying a retainer of a million dollars a year. They've been a client for four or five years now. So you can take six months to close a client that's going to make you a million a year. But the typical sales process we follow is send a cold email to get that initial call. That initial call, I try to keep as short as possible, usually around 15 minutes. And I try to go in like a doctor diagnosing a problem, meaning we've done so much research on their company that we have a theory, we have a hypothesis for what the solution could be, but we need to ask so many questions to figure that out. This is a little bit different than what most people do in sales, which is ask leading questions to get them through a list of bullet points to sell to them. This is legitimately sitting down and asking them, what have you tried in the past? Have you made a mobile app like this before? Is there somebody on the team that's been driving this and it's failed? Like, what has actually happened? At the end of that first call, I will say, this sounds great. I need to take this back to the team so we can come up with a real proposal that goes into detail on everything we need. Are you around on Wednesday at 3 p.m. to talk about it? That's the closing question on the first one. And I will send that calendar invite while we're on the phone. Then that sets up call number two. I will not send a proposal before the beginning of call number two. This is where most agencies make this mistake. And if you think about it, if you've ever bought a luxury car or really any car, you're not going to go into CarMax and have a contract handed to you and be expected to read the whole thing. The sales guy, as soon as he hands you the contract, is going to say, hey, here's point one. It says this. Point two says this. He's going to walk you through the whole thing. So if you send your proposals before call number two, you're basically doing that to the client. You're handing them this giant contract with no context and expecting them to figure out what your price actually means. And I've actually done research. We have proposal tracking tools. And most people will read the first page of a proposal, then they'll skip all the way to the end and just look at the pricing. And most of the time they'll never get back. So we send the proposal at the time of the meeting, then run through the proposal on call number two. We finally get to the price. It's there. We are able to set the context. The client will usually have questions. At the end of call number two, they will either be ready to buy, which happens sometimes, or they have more, more questions for the team or want to put together a list of questions. So we say, all right, put your list of questions together. How long do you think you need? About a week. And if they say yes, then we'll say, all right, let's do Wednesday at 2 p.m. again, drag the calendar invite. Meeting, I guess it's meeting three now is booked. And then meeting three is where we go over final questions. And it's just repeat over and over again until they buy.